Hi, I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Alas, it's the end of heirloom tomato season. Boo hoo, I'm really sad. And these are what's left from my garden, my gorgeous heirloom tomato garden. So I thought it might be fun and different and interesting because I have made some heirloom tomato tarts. They usually come out of the oven and they're hot. This is gonna be a slab pie. And it's, I named it an heirloom tomato mozzarella slab pie. It's gonna have the little tiny mozzarella balls. It's gonna have lots of herbs and sliced, uncooked heirloom tomatoes in all their glory. It's going to be awesome. This would be great as a light lunch, a light dinner, a brunch dish, or an appetizer for like a, a wine and cheese party. It's amazing and you will like have all your friends ooh and ah. But before we get started, I would like you to click the notification button, please, so you can become a subscriber and you can get notification of all my videos and my tips because I am a teacher all my life and I love baking and I love to teach people like you and you always teach me something. So it's a lot of fun to have you in my kitchen. So the first thing we're going to do uh, I preheated my oven a little bit early, uh, but we don't need the oven preheated right now um, because we have to we have to bake this this actual uh, slab pie blind. That means without a filling in it, and we're going to be baking it at 400 degrees. So I just have that going early, but we're going to be making the crust first in uh, a food processor. So I have one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And I'm going to put that in here. We do need to let it chill a little. So that's why I was a little excited and ahead of myself to preheat my oven. So one and a half cups of all-purpose flour, three quarters of a cup of cornmeal, yellow cornmeal. All right. You can use whatever type you want. And then I have half a teaspoon of coarse salt. So I like to use kosher salt. If you want to use sea salt, you can as well. Anything that you like. And just to give it a little flavor, a little garlicky flavor, half a teaspoon of garlic powder. All right, I'm gonna put that in there. And we're gonna whirl that around just to get it blended. Just pulse it, all right. And then, woo, yum yum, smells like garlic. And then I have cold butter unsalted cold butter, one stick or eight tablespoons, and I've cubed it in maybe half inch uh, pieces. And I'm gonna put that in there. You want it cold. I'm not handling it. I don't wanna put it near my fingers because we want a flaky crust. What we're really making is a flaky pie crust, but we're making it savory with some added accoutrement. Wait till you see what else I'm gonna add. You're not gonna believe it. So I'm gonna pulse this until we get pea-sized pieces. Don't overdo it. All right, the whole point is not to develop a lot of gluten. And gluten comes from the wheat plant, like all-purpose flour, things like that, that, those type of flours that have wheat in them. And basically, when, once you add water to wheat flour, gluten will be produced. So the strands of gluten that give strength and structure to all baked goods. And you do need some every, in everything. But here we want to minimize it because we want a little bit of a flaky crust. So this is my secret ingredient. This is four tablespoons or two ounces of, of bursan. You know that cream cheese, that herbed cream cheese that you get in the fancy cheese section of the supermarket? Well... That's what I'm using, two tablespoons. And I'm gonna put it right in the crust. You know, you can make cream cheese cr flaky crusts, and I've done that. So I thought, why not put Verson right into this flaky, savory slab pie? Why not? Why not? Is there any type of a flaky pie crust police that says you can't? No. So we're gonna pulse this again, just until that Verson becomes tiny little pieces, okay? Now it's time for some ice water because we do want to bring it together and we do want to form a dough. 
So I have a tablespoon measure and I have ice water. That's the first thing I do whenever I make any type of a pie crust. I get ice water because that is the key to keeping this flaky, this crust, by preventing the cheese and the butter from melting. And remember, this is cream cheese uh, with herbs in it. So I want four tablespoons. I'm just going to distribute two, three, four. And if you notice, I still have more because sometimes you might need a little more. Maybe when you measure, you measure a little too much flour, and you just want to always make sure that it comes together. And if you've been watching any of my YouTube videos, whenever you see it's not really becoming a dough yet, but it's becoming crumbly and beginning to stick together. So this is where you use your hands and you say, is this a dough yet? Ooh, almost. Okay, it's a little crumbly. I think I'm going to add just a little bit of uh, water, maybe half a tablespoon. And boy, do I smell that garlic. And it's in the garlic powder, and it's also in the bursong. Oh, it smells amazing. This is going to be amazing. And we're even going to put a little bursong, spread it on the bottom of this crust that's going to be baked blind, baked without a filling in it. All right, it's the only baking that this crust has. So what I'm going to do now, as I do with all my flaky pie crusts, I take it off of my food processor base, and I'm going to pour it into a bowl. All right, I do, and you've seen me do this before. So if you've never seen me do this, you haven't been watching my videos. So I put it in here because I can gather it better. Some chefs actually put it into a Ziploc bag or a freezer bag, and then they don't handle it. So I'm trying not to be too hands-on with this. I'm just going to push. I'm not kneading. I'm just pushing to get it into a dough. And you can see it's coming together really nicely. You may not need that extra half tablespoon. I did. Uh, sometimes on a rainy day, there's a little more moisture in the air or a humid day in your kitchen. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get some plastic wrap, and I'm going to wrap this and put this in the fridge for about an hour. If you're in a hurry, you can actually just throw it in the freezer for maybe 15, 20 minutes. I'm going to get all my, my dough in here, and I'm going to wrap it just like you're putting a baby in for a nap, all right? I'm going to flip one side over the other, flip it over, and then push. Push into a disc, like a thick disc, like a one-inch thick, thick disc. Uh, take this, put it in the fridge or in the freezer, but fridge for about an hour, just until it gets firm and it relaxes any gluten that we did form from mixing it or 15, 20 minutes in the freezer, however fast your freezer uh, gets something cold, but don't freeze it. See you back. So I rested my heirloom tomato mozzarella slab pie tart uh, shell, uh, the crust, I mean, it's not a shell yet, my crust for about an hour um, until it got a little bit more firm. If it gets too firm, take it out and just leave it out at room temperature for a while. Now I've rolled it out, I have a pan that is 10 by 15 with sides, like a regular sheet pan, like a jelly roll pan. And I'm going to roll it out a couple inches longer than that, so 17 by 12, so that it can go up the sides. Now, it's a little crumbly because of the cornmeal. Not to worry. I'm going to show you something that I have done before, and I don't want you to get upset when you see it. All right, so if you have crumbling, and you may have crumbling, I don't want you to get upset. So I've sprayed the pan with nonstick cooking spray. It is now about uh, what I want it to be, 17 by 12. It's crumbly, it's going to break if I lift it up in one piece and bring it over. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna cut it in half and I have a little water on the side and I'm gonna patch it together. Nothing is going to happen. It's going to be fine. So I'm just going to patch it because it's going to crumble. Do not worry. 
Do not worry. Do not worry. All right. So I'm actually going to get this up. This is what's known as a kuchen looser. You can even take a spring form pan uh, bottom and use this. And you see, I'm just sort of moving it over, trying to get as much flour off as I can. I take the other half. See what I'm doing? All right. It's quite ingenious, actually, because it works even if you have too large an area that you need to cover and you're just going to patch it. You see what I'm doing? I'm putting it, pushing it together. If you want to wet your fingers just a little, not too much water, patch it together, patch, patch, patch. And you're going to fit these into the corners gently, gently, be gentle with your dough. All right, almost looks like it's been stitched together like it had a little operation and it did, but that's okay. No harm, no foul. It's fine. I need to get it to go up the sides. All right. I need it to go up the sides. And then what I'm going to do is gently rip and rob Peter to pay Paul. So I'm going to put some of the crust that I don't have on the edges and I'm going to put it in places that need a little piece of crust. All right. So I'm just going to Take my little tiny offset or a little knife and just cut around there. All right, so if you see that, and you can actually just put it around. All right, and you're just going to patch, 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 patch. You don't want to use too much water. You just want to go down a little bit. I need a little piece here. I'm just going to make it look pretty over here by cutting that. Okay, that's all I'm doing. I'm evening it out and just patch it, patch, patch, patch. You want it to go up the sides and we're going to bake it blind. And that means I'm not going to blindfold myself and turn around and then find my way to the oven. <laughs> that doesn't work. And that's not what blind baking is. We are going to bake this crust without a filling because we want the filling to be unbaked. And that's our beautiful heirloom tomatoes. We're going to put some cheeses in there. We're going to put some bursan and we're going to put some mozzarella, little mozzarella balls. So again, I'm going to cut here. All right. I'm going to take anything extra and I'm going to just fit it in. See what I'm doing? Just fitting it in and patching and going up the sides. It looks great. It looks like it was in one piece. Uh, cornmeal can cut into gluten strands so that the dough doesn't hold together very well. Just don't, don't worry, but it gives it a nice sort of nuttiness uh, to the dough. So it's very, very nice to, uh, to eat. So what I'm going to do now, and if you've ever made a pie and you've baked it blind like a cream pie, uh, sometimes what people refer to as docking or stippling. You take a, uh, you take a fork and you just go around and make holes. This is so when any steam forms underneath on the bottom, it won't puff up the dough. You want to keep it down and flat to the pan. So you're just going to go around. They actually make little tools called stipplers. Just use a fork. Save your money. It's a very old fashioned word, docking or stippling. You may have heard it from your grandmother or maybe your mother, uh, very, very old fashioned. So this is one way to keep our dough from puffing up. The other way is to take a piece of parchment paper, gently put it in here on top of the pie, make it so it's big enough. And then you're going to take, I take dry beans or pie weights. They're basically acting as pie weights. I'm never eating these, trust me. These are about 20 years old anyway, and I've used them repeatedly for pies and tarts. And what you do is just spread them around, and this is going to keep the space. It's going to make sure that our docking and stippling did not, wasn't done in vain. It's going to keep the sides up. And then we are going to preheat our oven, which I already did, to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're going to bake this for about 15 minutes. 
And that's the only baking we need to do because we're going to take these out, uh, the beans out, so have a bowl handy, and make this long enough so you can gather from across the aisle and gather your parchment. Lift it up because the beans are going to be super hot, and you don't want to be picking them out of your dough. You want them away from the dough. And then you're going to place uh, the crust back in the oven for a little while, maybe five, ten minutes, just until it gets completely done on the bottom because the beans prevent the bottom from getting done. All right? So 15 minutes right now on 400 degrees Fahrenheit. See you back. So my crust came out of the oven, and now it's partially baked, so I'm going to gather both sides because it's still hot. And if a little bit of it cracked or is not totally done on the bottom, don't worry. It's going to go back in for about 5 or 10 minutes. You're going to be the judge. You just want it to be completely done. All right, and you can tell. And if it cracked a little, don't worry. It's going to be covered with gorgeous tomatoes. And you're just going to put these back because once these cool, you store them in a freezer bag and you can use them again and again. And that's what I do. All right, that's what I do. So I'm putting this back in the oven for about five or ten minutes. And what I'm going to do is you can push them back if it's still warm. You can actually push the uh, cracked pieces back together. Otherwise, it's not necessary. Five or ten minutes just to get the bottom baked. So my heirloom mozzarella tomato, heirloom tomato mozzarella slab pie. I got to get the order of things right. It came out of the oven. It's completely baked on the bottom. Now, I covered it with the excess of the um, Berson cheese that I had from the crust. I had a little left over, and I added another 5.2-ounce container um, of the garlic herb. And I mashed it up, and if it's a little hard to spread, pop it in the microwave for about 10 seconds. That's it at high, high, uh, high level. And then I smeared it over the bottom. See how pretty that looks? And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to arrange my beautiful heirloom tomatoes, just however you want. Like we could do green on one side, we could do red on the other side, we could alternate. Whatever you want to do, just make it pretty. Make it pretty. This is the last hurrah of summer. This is your moment. This is the showing off of your garden. And what you want to do is serve this as an appetizer on a large platter. Oh my gosh. How many people are going to be having this at a wine and cheese? Outrageous for a harvest. Outrageously delicious. Outrageously delicious. And just do whatever you want. I have yellow ones. I have, I want to show you my spoon tomatoes. We're going to put those on at the end. They're very tiny. They're very tiny. And just going to put these all around. Look at these. These are citrusy, these long green ones. And you can make them almost look like flowers. They're so pretty. And I'm just scattering everything around. Just make it pretty. However you want to do. Very, very, very random. Just purdy, purdy. All right. Very random, but beautiful, okay? And then I'm going to take my spoon tomatoes. Make that little baby half there. I'm going to take my spoon tomatoes, and I'm just going to scatter. Oh, look how pretty they look. Look at how pretty. Little baby ones. Oh, the kids will love those. And then I have some chopped herbs. So in my recipe, I said like two tablespoons of chopped herbs, any herbs you want. It could be dill, parsley. Um, basil, chive, scallion, anything you want. So I have a little bit of parsley. Okay. I have a little bit of basil. Delicious. From your garden or not. And then I have a little bit of chive. And this, like I said, could be not only an appetizer, it could be a meal. This is a meal. This is going to be my meal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tonight. And then the little tiny baby mozzarella balls. We're going to put those around. I have eight ounces, so this is an eight ounce package. Um, and this should feed as many people. I mean, it depends on what you want it for. 
you want it for a meal, probably about six people. Um, you could even serve it, um, you know, with a salad or what, whatever, whatever. It is so beautiful. And just pop them, pop them in wherever there's a space. Just pop them in. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Beautiful. And then just a little bit of extra virgin olive oil to drizzle. Just drizzle. Make it look pretty. What I like about the bursson, it's in the crust and it's on the bottom. So there's a theme here. All right. If you don't like bursson, you can leave it out. You could use anything you want. Okay. A little bit of flaky sea salt. Just a little. You want a crack of pepper, you can do that too. And uh, I'm going to have dinner now. This is like amazing. So I really hope you make this beautiful heirloom tomato mozzarella slab pie. And I hope you become a subscriber. Till next time.